Hello everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. In this video, what I'm going to take you over is little bits of organic chemistry essentials that will help make sense of some of the language that you'll see further down the line with organic chemistry. I'm going to cover everything here from curly arrows all the way to aromatics. So make sure you stay tuned throughout and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with everything over the summer period. So what are we looking at here with our organic molecules? Well, I've given you four to get started with. I've got a straight chain alkane, a straight chain haloalkane, a cyclic alkane, and a branched alkane. And I've drawn them all using displayed formula. The fact I've zigzagged this one as opposed to showing it in a straight line like the other, and this one here is just a, well, it's just a mess, doesn't actually make any difference whatsoever. It's however you want to draw it, I just find that this matches a different type of formulae that I'll be explaining in a moment. So here to get started with, you'll notice I've got two terms at the bottom of the page, aliphatic and alicyclic. Now, when we're looking at all of our different organic molecules in these examples, the aliphatic ones are the ones that I'm going to put a little orange tick to now. In fact, it's every single one of them. They are all examples of aliphatic molecules. However, not all of them are examples of alicyclic molecules. In fact, it's just this one here. So the one in the bottom right, which is actually called cyclopentane, is the only example here on the page of an alicyclic structure. So alicyclics are always aliphatics, but aliphatics are not always alicyclics. The other thing I want to focus on in this video is how we could redraw some of these structures in a slightly easier formulae, and we call this skeletal. So for example here, this molecule is a three carbon chain, and I'm putting these numbers on just to show you the position of these three carbons on the next type of formulae I'm going to use. Now skeletal formulae for this particular structure, which by the way would be propane, is literally just drawn like this. That's it. Carbons one, carbons two, and carbons three. Every end of the line, and every corner in the line, unless another element is shown there instead, represents a carbon atom. And you'll notice I don't need to show any CH bonds onto skeletal. The aliphatic one down here of, this would be two chlorobutane, is a great opportunity to show you how we represent a different atom at the end of a bond. So I draw my main carbon chain of four carbons, like so, and then on the second carbon along, I need to show my Cl, so I show a line, but then rather than leaving it blank, I show a chlorine at the end of that line. Some people make an early mistake and will show a structure like this and just sort of lurk a chlorine nearby, but that's definitely not the way to go with this. So I want to get rid of that habit straight away. Over here, this would be 2-methyl propane, and this is an example of a branched alkane. So 2-methyl propane. And I would draw this in skeletal as a three carbon chain, but then this up here is a branch, and I literally show it just like that. And so that represents my first, second, and third carbons, and then my branch at the top. Lastly, this alicyclic structure, remember it's the only alicyclic on the page, is cyclopentane. And it's drawn in skeletal with quite literally a pentagon. That's all you need to draw for it. So if you can get good with skeletal formulae, because these are very widely accepted in the OCR exams, you can save yourselves a lot of time in the examination. You also need to be familiar with these terms of aliphatic and alicyclic because they often introduce the question using these terms and we don't want to be thrown off right at the very start. So what have I got for you this time? Well, over here on the left, you can see these two very different molecules, and you can see I've labeled up already that these represent aromatics. In fact, these two are 
literally the exact same thing. They are just different ways of representing the same structure. They are both representations of C6H6, which is called benzene. And so you need to be able to recognize this for your first year, but you won't know any benzene reactions until next year. Over here, I've got three structures that look like they've got this kind of feature to them. Now, this is actually a representation of a double bond. But in the aromatics, when three are together in a hexagon, it causes for something to be very different, and an aromatic term is used to describe it. On its own, however, over here, this would just be, for instance, butwonine, but drawn in skeletal formula. And so you can see here, I'm littering this with hydrogens all the way through, but I have got my essential one, two, three, four carbon chain. The double bond here is this representation just drawn in skeletal. Now, the molecular formula of this one is C4H8. The molecular formula of this one is also C4H8. And weirdly, so is this one. And that's because these three structures, although they have very different names, this would be butuanine, this would be butuene, and this would be 2-methylpropuanine, they are all structural isomers of each other. They all have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. They are also all unsaturated. That means they contain at least one carbon-carbon double bond. They are also all, including the aromatics, hydrocarbons, which means they contain carbon and hydrogen only. You might be wondering, are there other structural isomers of this formula? Well, there are, but they don't have this unsaturated feature. For example, if I take four carbon atoms and put them in a square together like so, once I've littered this with hydrogens, you'll notice that I no longer have a double bond. I've created a saturated alicyclic structure. And you can appreciate there with that use of language how they might bring this kind of thing up in the exam and why it's so crucial to make sure you recognize these terms. This would be drawn in skeletal as quite literally a square. And a very similar structure would be a triangle with a branch. So this would be cyclobutane and this would be methyl cyclopropane. They both, like these, have the molecular formula C4H8. However, they are saturated alicyclic structures, whereas these were unsaturated aliphatic structures. So make sure you know the difference in your terminology, but also how structural isomerism from the same molecular formula but to different structural formulas can help you gain greater insight to how a molecule isn't just going to be represented as C4H8 in your chemistry exams. So what do we have now? Now what I want to take a look at in this introduction to organic chemistry is bond fission. And I'm going to look at these two different structures as a way of describing the different types of bond fission we need to be familiar with. For example, this molecule has bond fission that takes place between these two atoms here, the carbon and the chlorine. And by bond fission, I mean bond breaking. All the other bonds around the carbon stay the same. I've got these three CH bonds just here. The chlorine, however, has now come loose. And in fact, the type of bond fission that I want to demonstrate has left us with a positive charge on the carbon and a negative charge on the chlorine. That means the chlorine has picked up electrons, whereas the carbon seems to have lost one. What's happened is, the pair of electrons here that were shared in between these two atoms have actually moved onto the chlorine, giving us this different in ionic charges. Now here, this is an example of heterolytic bond fission. And what I've drawn for you here is actually a piece of organic chemistry notation. It's called a curly arrow. And the curly arrow represents the movement of a pair of electrons. Curly arrows at A level always start at either a bond or a lone pair of electrons and they should end where you want the electrons to go. For example here, I started at the bond and I've shown the electrons going onto the chlorine, which is why the arrow goes in this direction. Now the alternative type of bond fission that I want to talk about is called homolytic bond fission, 
We don't have curly arrows this time. And instead, what we show are our two products, which seem to have this dot notation to them. The dot notation means that these two substances here are free radicals. And this dot means that this has a single unpaired electron. That means that when this bond broke, one of the electrons in the bond went this way and the other went the other. And so here I've got two different free radicals here being formed. I don't have charges, like I saw last time, and so a way of trying to learn when each is used is quite simple. Heterolytic bond fission takes place when a curly arrow is used to show the formation of two different ions. Homolytic bond fission takes place when there is no use of a curly arrow and I make free radicals as the product. Heterolytic bond fission is when the bond breaks and the electrons are shared unequally between the two atoms originally in the bond, creating two ions. Homolytic bond fission is when the bond breaks and the two electrons that were shared between the two atoms each go to one of the atoms from the original covalent bond. You need to be familiar with both types of these different bond fissions for your A-level in organic chemistry.